So I'm Ronan Plesser, I'm a professor of physics and mathematics, and I have an appointment in the program in education because I have a lot of interest in uh, science education and science outreach. Well, that's a good question because I've done it, so I can tell you what I use. So, normally in the world we think that in physics we say that the universe is made out of particles. We have all kinds of funny names for them, electrons and quarks and atoms. I've never seen an electron, but I know they're there because I do the math with them and I get the answers that match what we see and I can understand how things work. String theory is what you get if you imagine that all these little things you've never seen are not really particles. They don't actually live in one tiny place. They're not like a dot. They're actually literally a loop, like a loop of string or a rubber band. And what that means is, well, I've never seen the loops. We've never even seen the effects of loops in our accelerators. That's just because they're really small. If you look at a loop from far away, you can't tell the difference between a loop and a particle. It's just too small. The difference between a loop and a particle is that all a particle can do is lives at a point. All it can do is move around. A loop can move around just like a particle, so you can fake a particle. But a loop can also wiggle in a lot of different ways. It can have like waves on it. It can swing back and forth. It can twist. It can change its shape. There's an infinite number of things that a loop can do that a particle can't. That means two things. One is that string theory is an infinitely harder than particle theory, which is why we don't really know much about it. And then the other thing is that it's infinitely richer. And one of the rich things about string theory is that it explains, it turns out, automatically, it explains gravity. And it turns out that we don't have a good theory that explains gravity. Einstein told us a beautiful theory about gravity, the general theory of relativity. But that theory is valid as a classical theory. It's not valid in a quantum universe. And we know we live in a quantum universe. And there are some questions you want to ask about black holes, about the beginning of the universe, to which the answers have to do with a quantum theory of gravity. Until we have one, we can't answer those questions. And those are really cool questions. We all want to know the answer. String theory is our best hope so far, is the long answer to what string theory is. The short answer is I don't know. We're still trying to figure out what it really is. We have a bunch of ideas, and we try to use them to see what we can say. But we don't have a theory, per se. We have all these beginnings of a theory. That's like asking a kindergartner how much they've changed in the past seven years. Fifty years ago, there was no such thing. And the first ideas that later became what we now call string theory showed up about 50 years ago in the context of a completely unrelated project. People were trying to understand some properties of nuclear interactions, strong nuclear force. And uh, they came up with an idea, some mathematical ideas, and then when they thought about it really hard, they realized that they were discussing a description of the world that included strings in it. And uh, then they studied the properties some more and realized that it wasn't very good for describing strong nuclear force. There were better ideas that were invented in the 70s that we now use. Uh, but on the other hand, some crazy people, despite that, thought, oh, this is a great idea. It's got to be good for something. And they realized that one of the funny things, one of the things that didn't match uh, nuclear physics was that these strings automatically described the theory of gravity. And they thought, oh, well, maybe instead of nuclear strings, we have gravity strings. We have a fundamental theory of the universe made up of strings. And they started playing with it. And uh, for a long time, it was only a couple of crazy people who did that. And around the early to mid 80s, there were a bunch of really exciting discoveries made by these guys that led a lot of us to think that maybe this is the best idea we have to a fundamental, completely, uh, and, and fundamental in a different way than, say, atoms. Fundamental in a terminal way, the ultimate final, total, complete theory of the universe at a fundamental level is our best guess is going to come from strength.